Hi, I'm Nathan. Welcome to Taoist Alchemy Course 2, The Furnace and the Cauldron. In Course 1, Foundation, uh, we went through uh, the nine basic techniques that we used throughout the alchemical process. We developed a technical foundation for Taoist alchemy and later internal alchemy. Uh, remember, internal alchemy is a part of Taoist alchemy. So what are we going to do now? Where to? Well, <laughs> in this course, we're going to take those skills and we're going to put them to work. We're going to, we're going to do something, right? So Taoist alchemy and, and, and definitely internal alchemy, Nei Dan, um, there is a process, there is a goal, there is something we're doing to get things done. Um, it is a, a systematic way of working with uh, energy inside the body and learning to transform that energy um, into a higher vibratory state. Um, along the way, we learn um, a lot about who we are and we um, learn and who we are and, and how we interact with our environment. Um, and it's, you know, we get health benefits and all these other wonderful benefits. Um, but I think my point here is that there is something we're doing. In course one, we were just playing around with some techniques. We were having fun, kind of getting a sense of, okay, what body, body pour breathing, what's that? Um, you know, how do you breathe with a lower abdomen? Uh, how do you do inner breathing, right? Sort of getting a sense of what these different techniques are. Now, um, in this course, and pretty much for the rest of the courses, um, into the future, we will be working to get things done. We'll have a goal. We'll be using um, the techniques we have learned to, um, in order to do something. In this course, we're going to be learning to set up the furnace and cauldron, an lu shu ding. So an lu, an means to, to calm or uh, to make peaceful, right? To calm. Um, and uh, lu is furnace. Uh, shu is to set up, and ding is the, the, the three-legged cauldron, or sometimes called the tripod. Uh, in, in ancient China, you had these uh, dings, these cauldrons that had three legs. Um, and it goes back to the, the warring state period. And even before then, I, even before then, I believe, I think it was even earlier Zhou dynasty, in, might even been in the Shang dynasty, um, having a ding was um, a sign of power. It's kind of like in the West here, we think of it as a throne um, or maybe a scepter, probably the throne, right? So in, in, the, in the palace court, there was this, this um, vessel, um, a cauldron uh, that was um, usually cast out of uh, metal. Um, and it was a symbol of the king's uh, um, power. Uh, and so that, uh, this, this, this ding, um, this cauldron, this, this idea of the cauldron has come forward through us through the centuries. Um, and we, and we, we use this, uh, within the alchemical work. Um, so we're going to, uh, no, no, no. Okay. Furnace, cauldron. What does that even mean? We're talking about meditation here, right? Uh, so, uh, first thing to know, I guess, you know, second thing to know is we're internal alchemy borrows language and metaphors from um, external alchemy, right? So we have originally uh, there was external alchemy. So you would have a alchemist would go into um, his or her laboratory and they would uh, endeavor to um, um, change stone into gold. Uh, or they would endeavor to find the, the pill of immortality, right? So you could eat this pill and ingest it and you would live forever, right? Um, or um, you, various external material things could be used to, uh, to, to open us up to give us powers and open us up to other realities and transcendence and all that stuff. So it wasn't just uh, physical immortality, there's other things that got caught up in there as well. And there's, in, in ancient China, there's, there's, a, there's a number of different streams of practice and, uh, and thought that, that come together um, within internal alchemy and then now within in, you know, um, what we're doing here, Taoist alchemy. Um, so so um, that language and those, that metaphor, 
Um, part of that is this idea of the furnace and the cauldron. So in, in, in external alchemy, you go into the laboratory and you set up a furnace and the furnace is um, uh, it's usually um, a square vessel uh, um, that uh, holds the heat. It, it supplies the heat, right? So alchemy is about you have a, um, an ingredient, a material, and you, um, you want to transform that material into something else. You want to affect a change. To do that, usually you'd heat. Usually you would use heat. Uh, and we're doing that inside as well, right? So except in, in terms of going into the external laboratory, the laboratory becomes our, our body, um, at least at the first stage of internal alchemy. And we go inside the body um, and we um, um, seek, we, 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 we uh, so I have to go back to the <laughs> to external alchemy before we go in the body. Um, so we have uh, we have um, an ingredient. We want to change into something else. We put the ingredient in a furnace. We supply heat and we cook it for a certain amount of time. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, you have to put the ingredient in a cauldron, right? So it goes in the cauldron first, and the cauldron goes inside the furnace, right? So you have heat. And then you have the cauldron, which is a vessel to hold. Uh, it's the the ding qi. The it holds um, what you're working with, right? Uh, and and then the alchemist would come back, and they would they would open up the furnace, and they'd open up the vessel, take the lid off or the, the cauldron, and look inside and, and see if anything had happened. Uh, and so we're doing that ourselves. We're going to learn to do that ourselves. Um, the body is the furnace, so the body supplies the heat. The cauldron is um, either the, it can be different things, it can shift, and the furnace shifts as well, but for right now, our furnace is the body. The cauldron will be either the lower abdominal space. Um, so for the first two sessions of this course, the guided sessions, we'll be working a lot with the lower ab abdominal cavity, that space. Um, and, then, and then later on, it can be the lower field, which we'll do in this course as well. Um, often called the, the lower dantian. Uh, and that lower field can also be a container. And it can be in the container can change within a session too, right? So it, it can, it, you have to say, we have to stay loose with these terms. Um, and because um, everything's always shifting and changing, and it's all perspective, right? So uh, if you're, you know, working with the lower abdominal cavity, uh, and you're, and that's the place in the process, then that is a container. That is the cauldron. Um, but then when we shift to working with the, the lower field, then that becomes the container, the cauldron. Uh, the cauldron can be any of the fields. It can be any of the three spaces. It can also be the inner cavity, nei qiang. Um, and there's other things we can do later on. Uh, but inside the body, those are the general uh, cauldrons that we use. Okay, so um, Internal alchemy and Taoist alchemy, the, this process that we're learning, is a process of accumulation. We are learning to, um, working to accumulate energy, qi. Uh, to do that, um, we need to have a container. So this is another way of thinking about the furnace and the cauldron, right? If our container, the cauldron, has holes in it, then it's not going to work, right? I, I in early, in the last course I used the the metaphor of the of the pail, right? You have a pail and you want to go and get some water, uh, and if the pail has holes in it, and you fill it up with water, it's not going to work. So um, you know, first thing we need to do is is seal the container. Um, now the heat source, the heat source as well. To have we want a nice we want a nice uh, consistent. Um, uh, degree of heat to be able to apply to the container. It needs to be the right kind of heat. To do that, we need to do what's called calm the furnace or set up the furnace. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it's like when, you know, I used a metaphor in the last course about the oven. It's like when you're cooking, if, you ha if, if the oven door is left open, uh, then no heat is going to build up inside. You can, you can turn it up all the way. Um, you'll have lots, you're burnt, you can burn lots of gas or electricity to, to try and heat up that oven. 
Um, but in the end, it's, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be any good, right? Because the heat, it's just gonna escape and it's not gonna be able to do what you need it to do. So, uh, um, calming the furnace is about closing that oven door. And I think this metaphor works best if you think about, um, a wood, uh, oven. Now, when I was a kid, I, I was born off grid, um, in the Yukon in a little cabin, middle of nowhere and no electricity, no running water. And when we wanted to cook, we cooked um, on, on wood, with wood. And um, I remember the process, you have to, you start the fire, right? So you get it going, you use kindling and you have a st starter, maybe some newspaper or whatnot, get it lit. Um, but that's not enough, right? What you wanna do, because the kindling burns very quickly, right? It burns very hot, like um, there's lots of fire, looks really fancy. Um, but it, it's going to die down right away and there's going to be nothing left. What we want is a nice bed of coals, right? In that, in the, in the stove. So kindling's good to get started, but then we need to start adding, um, kinds of wood that are going to, they take a little longer to ignite. Uh, but once they ignite, they'll burn for a longer period of time. And when they burn, um, they will turn into a, um, there's enough substance, there's enough wood there to turn into some nice coals and then you get that nice heat, right? And then, you know, the, your fire's caught. It's not gonna go out. Um, and when you're living off the grid, you know, in the middle of the winter and, and Yukon, you know, it goes down to minus 40 quite regularly in the winter, you need fire uh, or you're gonna be very cold. Um, and so it's, it's important, right? So you really need to focus on that. So, uh, um, Coming back to our alchemy, same thing is true with, with alchemy to an extent that the metaphor really carries in terms of we want to build up a nice bed of coals inside. We want to get a nice heat going that can sustain itself and has a nice quality to it, right? And, and here heat generally means our awareness, our enyam, using the enyam properly, but it's from the body as well. So we're also using the body to create pressure. Um, so there's different things that come together, right? Um, and it's finding, uh, um, so thinking about the metaphor of creating the fire works for alchemy. It's, 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 it's getting um, our energies and our awareness going in the right way inside and um, to be able to create a consistent heat. Then we have the, we take the ingredients, put it in the container, um, put the lid on the container, um, and putting the lid on the container is, is sealing the upper, seven upper openings, right? So our awareness does not leak out. So if there's no lid on the contain, on, on the uh, cauldron, uh, um, it won't cook, right? When I put the lid on there to keep the steam inside, so it gets hot and steamy inside. And then, and the ingredients are um, different energies inside the body. So the five, ingredients of the five phases are the energies that we harvest uh, from the internal organs, which we'll, we'll do in um, course three. Um, so learning how to um, uh, cai yao. So cai yao is to, um, to harvest the medicine, to find, get, go, go into the, in the old days, uh, you know, the, the herb, herb gather, gatherers of, of yore would, you know, they put on their, their rain hat and their robes and they'd have their satchel for their, their medicine and, their, you know, their sandals and they'd go off into the mountains. Um, the misty mountains and and find the really good herbs, right? Because herbs for for external alchemy and 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 medicine, good medicine for um, Chinese for Chinese uh, therapeutic medicine, um, they're found up in the the mountains where the chi is good and and uh, and whatnot. So they find these things and put them in their satchel and they come down and they and if they're external alchemy, then they'll use that. Um, and if they're using it for um, in, in the medical clinic to treat their patients, they'll use that, or they'll use it there, right? So for us, like, um, like we were talking about before with the furnace and cauldron, this is another metaphor. Uh, our, the body is now the, the mountain, and our, we are our awareness, or our shen, and we go inside the mountain to go and find where the good chi is and harvest it, cai yao, and um, bring it into uh, the cauldron. And then we put the lid on it, uh, and then put the, uh, the lids in the furnace, make sure the furnace is sealed, and then we fire it. 
and, uh, and see what happens. Now, we're not going to do a lot of that in this course. That's be outside of the scope of, of course two. Um, we'll be doing uh, that later on. Um, but this is where we're going. And so right now we're just figuring out, okay, so what is a cauldron? Where is it? What does that lower abdominal cavity feel like? Right? Um, how can I activate it? How can I work with it? Um, what does the lower field feel like? The satian. Um, how can I work with it? How can I activate it? Right? Um, and then using body pore breathing, um, you know, for the whole body is, is work in the furnace, sort of getting our awareness. Our, and remember where the E the goes, the shun goes. Where the shun goes, the chi goes. So by focusing our awareness on the outer cavity of chi, the chi xue, um, we then go inside um, and, and begin working with um, the lower abdominal cavity and then the lower field. So it's kind of like there's a few different levels, right, of inside and outside, which we'll go through with the guided instructions <coughs> in this course. Okay, so, um, uh, so it's a process of accumulation. And uh, what we're doing throughout this course is just is, is learning to seal up the human universe um, and build foundation. So in our lineage, um, building foundation, Zhu Ji or Zhu Ji Fa, right, methods of building foundation, is this. This course is, is, is what we're doing. Um, yes, we're doing furnace and cauldron, but we're also building foundation. And building foundation for us is um, it's getting enough substance in this case, chi, to be able to do the alchemical work, right? So that's, that's, that's just what building, uh, that's our technical um, definition of, of building foundation. So foundation can be something much broader. It can be um, having a strong, um, flexible, supple body, um, a mind that is relatively still and um, relatively um, doesn't get um, pushed around too much by external influences. Um, you can remain in your center fairly well. Uh, your ye xing, the, the wild nature has, has calmed. Um, um, the, we've parted the wild horse's mane. We're, we're reining in the wild horses of our, um, of our um, emotions. Uh, we've embraced the tiger and return to the mountains. We've embraced the tiger. A tiger represents wild emotions. And return to a mountain become, means to become still um, like a mountain. Um, still like Mount Tai, they say. Uh, and that, that's, a, that's a more broader um, discussion about, a more broader perspective of foundation. That's very important. Um, but in this course, what I'm more interested in um, is, is the actual technical term of building foundation. And that is having enough chi in the right spot. And we use building foundation, zhu ji, in every uh, session. Um, again, it's built into the, the yin xian methods, um, which we're learning throughout these courses. Uh, so then we, when we get to actual internal alchemy, we'll, we'll be able to, um, we'll know what to do, right? And so furnace, setting up furnace and cauldron, calming furnace, set up cauldron, is a, um, it's a um, method of building foundation. Uh, and it's also, um, um, so it, it, it seals uh, leakages um, and, uh, and brings the chi into the right area. Okay, uh, so that's why we're doing this course. That's what we're doing here. We're not doing internal alchemy yet, but we're definitely doing Taoist alchemy, right? We're definitely working at, well, these are the yin xian methods, um, and we're, we're building, um, right, the, the requisite uh, techniques and knowledge to be able to do internal alchemy. Now, um, there are different ways to calm the furnace and set up the cauldron. Um, calm furnace, set up cauldron is a method. And a method is, is a broad, is, it's, it's something we are trying to do. There's a goal and we want to do something to achieve that goal. Within methods are various techniques. There's different techniques that we can use to attain um, a goal. So example, a method might be stillness, entering stillness. So we want to become still. There might be different techniques we can use to do that. Um, for stillness, there isn't that 
many techniques we use in this lineage. Maybe regulate body is a better example. So regulate body is a method. We want to regulate the body so that up is up, down is down, left left is left, and right is right. So, and you know, we're, we're, we're set up, right? And the body is still, it's stabilized, right? If you get ding, it's even better. You get that nice stability happening. Um, and then the form can begin to come out. Now that's a method. There's different ways that we can go about doing that, right? There's different techniques that we can apply. Such a poor technique would be like poor breathing, right? The basic techniques from course one, any of those are they're techniques, they're not methods, right? They're not trying to do something. They're just a way of doing, of doing something to get a certain result, right? So for this, uh, calm furnace and set up cauldron, it's a method. We want to calm the furnace, so first we need to seal up the furnace, make sure the furnace doesn't um, have any leakages. Make sure it has enough heat inside and enough pressure, right? Pressure goes along with the heat. Um, and figure out the right um, ho ho, the right fire phasing to use the right um, degree of breath and, and strength of awareness. Uh, and then set up the cauldron within the furnace. Um, um, putting the lid on the cauldron, um, activating the cauldron, creating a space. So initially the cauldron will be a yin space, a yin energetic space. It'll be kind of a, you'll be able to feel something there, but it won't have a lot of pop to it. It won't be, it won't be sizzling and, you know, there won't be lots of vibrations or movement. It'll be a much more sort of passive space that we can open up um, within the lower abdominal cavity, right? Uh, it's kind of like the eye in the storm. The actual lower field can be, when we first create it, is, is quite, um, quite passive. The, the chi around it in the lower abdominal cavity can be quite, um, quite active, right? So yin, uh, yin within the yang, etc. Now, um, so we, uh, that, that's, that's the method. Now, how do we do that? Well, we, in this course, we'll be doing a, a sequence that I like. It's, um, it's, quite a, it's quite a powerful sequence. It's quite dynamic. There's a lot of huffing and puffing. So I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be leading you through um, a very specific sequence of breathing techniques that use poor breathing, body breathing, lower abdominal breathing, um, inner breathing, um, and then finally lower field breathing. So again, all course one stuff. We're gonna be applying these techniques to calm the furnace and set up the cauldron, right? And just know later on in more advanced courses, uh, different ways of doing it, we can we don't need to do that to calm furnace and set up cauldron. We can just use, there's a way of just using yin yin and our shen. Uh, when the shen becomes very clear and our, our yin yin is very is strong and we, we develop something called nian li, um, the, the uh, awareness force, um, then we can just use that. We don't have to do any breathing techniques. Just ignore breathing altogether. And you can just, you can just set it up. Um, but for right now, we're gonna do a lot of huffing and puffing. We're gonna get the movement body moving and when it's contracting, expanding, um, because initially you wanna get movement. You wanna get everything moving and, and that helps break down um, any um, tension, any stagnation, um, generally, um, before we start this sort of practice, we can be quite tight. Um, and it's called the, the, the Y-Kurt, is the external uh, casing that we have. It can be energetic casing, physical casing. Um, that the energetic casing needs to be broken open. Um, and so that, so that uh, and to do that, we need to work with the, the physical casing. Physical casing is the, you know, the, the ribs and the tissues and the, the, the flesh, uh, the muscles, basically getting inside the torso. So we're not too worried about arms and legs, right? Um, yeah, so um, now during this course, the, the, there will be a lot of breathing. And so it's important for you to find the breathing that's right for you, right? So I will be, um, because this course will be used by many people, it's an online course, and so I'm going to call out the breathing at a certain rhythm. Breathe in, breathe out, right? Now, if that's too slow or too fast for you, then it's gonna be uncomfortable. Everyone's breathing is different, as we discussed in course one. 
Uh, so again, find the breathing that's right for you. If you can follow the instructions, it's, it's easiest because then you don't have to think at all. Um, but if, if it's too slow or too fast for you, then just do your own breathing and just listen to when I change, when the instructions change, right? Because there's some, you know, sometimes we'll be doing body, body poor breathing and other times we'll just be doing body breathing. Um, and then we might quickly shift to lower abdominal breathing. You know, it moves around, right? So find the breathing that's right for you. Um, each of these sessions builds upon the last. Uh, there's five sessions in this, in this course. Um, and each one, start with the first one and build, right? So uh, what does that mean? That means do one until you're comfortable with it and then go on to the next. Uh, it's up to you. If you want to go through all of them sequentially, you know, over over a course of a week, yeah, go for it. Check them all out. That's fine. But I recommend going back and, and, and sticking with, with hey, the first one for a week or two and then do the next one for maybe a week or two and so on until you get to the last one. And then stick with the last one for maybe 100 days. Um, it's up to you. You know, if, if you're newer to this stuff, then, then do it longer. Uh, if you've been around and you have some practice under your belt, you have a good foundation already, then you can go through this quicker and move on to course three. Um, but a hundred days is a good, is a good, um, it also depends how much, a good target. It also depends how much you're practicing. So that's a hundred days doing it um, every day. Now, something else to, that's important is uh, you don't need to follow the guided instructions every day for a hundred days. You can also, some days you might not feel like setting, calming the furnace and setting up the cauldron. You might not want to do these sessions. You might just want to sit in stillness. Then I encourage you to listen to your body and listen to what you need, right? If you've had a, a long day at work and, and you may practice at night, you just don't have time to do a full session, you, then, then listen to that, right? You're just going to end up depleting yourself by forcing yourself, you know, f you know, you don't need to do it every day for a hundred days. So there's flexibility with this, right? There are certain times when you need to practice um, regularly, but this is okay. You don't need to. Uh, if you can practice every day, it's the best, but you don't need to follow um, this sequence every day. Because this sequence is, it's quite young. It's quite dynamic. Um, and we don't want to, um, you also want to have space to be able to allow um, body and mind and, and, and chi and whatnot to sometimes they, they just have their own agenda and they want to do their own thing. And if you're kind of forcing them to do, um, this sequence when they don't want to, then, you know, that's not healthy, right? So pay attention to that. And that's, that's up to us to develop through our practice, knowing, um, you know, knowing when to do what, um, when I first met, met master Wong first retreat with him, one of my first questions was, how do I, how do I structure uh, my training? How do I schedule my training? And he's like, no, 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 don't, don't schedule. Um, just be present. What do you need in each day? And go with that. And I think, you know, it's very specific, some specific guidance for me personally. And that's kind of how his guidance happens. He might tell someone else to do a schedule. <laughs> there's no, you know, first rule of Taoism is there's no rules. Uh, and, uh, and that might've been just for me, but I, I, I think that's kind of his style and it makes sense, right? So um, be, be flexible when applying these methods. Um, and then if you can, uh, see if you can get to a, a place where you can do the, the sequences in this course by rote. Uh, in other words, you, do, you don't need to listen to the audio. Um, you know, after a hundred days of, of doing it, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll probably get a pretty embodied sense of, um, what to do, uh, without, you don't need to follow the audio. And that's the best. Like these guided instructions are so precious. The, they, they really are, um, this talking here, nah, eh, not so much. You can read a book, right? But the guided instructions, that's what's going to really, um, transmit a big part of the practice to, to you is through listening to those guided instructions. And you'll learn so much from listening to those guided instructions. Um, but at some point, you don't want to follow the audio anymore because that gives you the space and flexibility to work with the methods the way you need to, the way you need to in that moment for that session, 
right? Maybe one session, you don't need to do a lot of body poor breathing. You just want to work with natural breathing and, and listen to your heart for a while and then do some lower abdominal breathing. I mean, you, yes, this is a sequence and when you're learning it, it's good to stay structured, but then we want to transcend the structure and find the flow um, because that's the only way to, to get where we need to go. Um, okay. So uh, along with this, uh, this, these sessions, um, I will be giving talks about different aspects of Taoist practice. Um, we'll be talking a little bit more in depth about what Shen is, uh, what, what Taoism is, you know, they'll have a couple different topics as well. Um, and each talk, uh, there'll be, um, uh, each module for each session, there'll be a, a talk about, um, that session and, and what you need to know. Uh, and then there'll be another talk that will just be more, um, more broad, more kind of technical theory type stuff, which is, I think it's now that you've had some, some mileage with the practices, we can start talking about some of that stuff and bringing that into, uh, into the learning process. Okay. So, um, there, uh, there's a session there. I think just go ahead and try out, uh, that session. Um, and then stay with that for a little while. And then when you want, go on to talk number two and session number two. And I'll see you, I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.